Hi, good afternoon, Council President Bass and Council members and everybody else here with us today. Um, I'm Suzanne Doran. I'm heading into my seventh year now as the Public Ethics Commission's lead analyst, and I'm currently acting director while we're doing a director search. So it's our great pleasure to be here today and for me to also um, to introduce the commission to you and our work. Um, and also our ethics analyst Jelani Killings is here with me. Um, I do want to mention right off the top that we will be reaching out to each of your offices individually to schedule what we call an ethics check-in. And that's an opportunity to dig deeper into the requirements and issues that we're going to be giving a very high level overview of um, today. And I really, really encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity to ask questions and share concerns with us in a less formal setting. I think it's very valuable. Um, and we learn a lot on both sides. But to start out, just for anyone who's less familiar with our commission, the Public Ethics Commission is an independent, nonpartisan city board. It was created by city charter in 1996 with the goal of ensuring fairness, openness, honesty, and integrity in our Oakland city government. And in 2014, the commission's independence and enforcement authority were significantly strengthened by ballot measure. And now in 2023, with passage of Measure W, the Oakland Fair Elections Act, the commission is planning for another, um, another period of very significant transition and growth and staffing structure and responsibilities as we become administrator of a completely redesigned public campaign financing program. The commission itself consists of uh, seven member volunteer board and they oversee our PEC policies and priorities. And we currently have um, a seven member staff team that conducts our day-to-day -day activities. So overall, um, our role in city government is to independently and fairly ensure compliance with our local ethics, campaign finance, open government and lobbying laws. These are all laws that are intended to reduce or eliminate improper influence and enhance transparency, transparency of our government information and decision making um, to ensure the government operates in the public's interest. And um, our strategy around that is to really prioritize leadership and collaboration in building our government systems in a way that's designed to support and incentivize ethical conduct and fair processes so that our investigations and prosecutions are a last resort rather than our first contact. So, oh, if you could go to the next slide, please. So if you look at our, our kind of simple graphic here, I think it communicates the, you know, our outlook in terms of the, our, the collaborative side, which means building policies, systems, laws, technology changes, as well as equity focused programs to enhance civic participation as our, our big primary way of building public trust. And then our second um, tack is prevention and the prevention activities we are engaged in are very core to our work, our education, advice and technical assistance, issuing formal legal opinions, all to ensure awareness and understanding of the city's campaign finance, ethics and transparency laws. Um, we also are responsible for collecting large amounts of public disclosure um, required data and making that data easily accessible and meaningful to Oakland residents is another way that we are um, trying to prevent uh, any uh, undue influence. And then lastly, there's our enforcement program and that investigates allegations of wrongdoing and enforces violations of the laws in our jurisdiction um, and is empowered with the ability to make administrative prosecutions and civil litigations and uh, assess penalties on violators. So with that kind of big picture look at, at who we are and what we do, I'm gonna hand off to my colleague Jelani uh, to give you more of an overview of the laws themselves and highlight the resources that we have to assist you with navigating them. Thank you, Suzanne, and good afternoon, uh, city council members, staff, uh, as well as members of the public. My name is Jelani Killings an ethics analyst with the city's Public Ethics Commission. 
And so we can go to the next slide. And our intention uh, this afternoon is really to provide a high level overview as Suzanne shared. Uh, we really work in the spirit of collaboration. Uh, so we will be reaching out to all of your individual offices uh, for check-ins and wanna let you know that we are available if you ever need any advice and assistance when it comes to compliance or even just talking through the areas of uh, government ethics, transparency, as well as campaign finance rules here in the city of Oakland. And so we really lead with all of our conversations in the Public Ethics Commission. Really, if we had to boil down our, our mission and our objective, it's really to build public trust here in the city of Oakland and in our institution. And so really making sure that we all understand that our public office, whether as employees or officials, uh, that it is a public trust, uh, understanding that city officials, that we're empowered and entrusted by the public to use city time, money, and property in a legal and responsible manner. And so we put this graph up here. This is not uh, specific to Oakland uh, by any means. This is a general Pew Research um, data graph that was showing just the public's perception of government over decades and generations. And so we really just highlight that in terms of the importance of we represent the public, uh, whether we're elected, appointed, or in our employment positions. And we wanna make sure that we're utilizing all of the city's resources for the benefit of the public and never for any type of private gain or personal advantage. And so with that, we really wanna keep that in mind as we're looking at limiting improper influence, as we look at ethics laws, as we look at our role here in the city of Oakland as public servants. And we uh, use that term because it's also codified in our Government Ethics Act to really understand our role and our service to the public. And generally, when we talk about the need for public ethics and government ethics laws here in the city of Oakland, one is we want to ensure that us as public servants, that we're serving with integrity, uh, that the public's funds are protected. So there's a level of fiscal responsibility that's also baked into it. We want to ensure that the public can see what the government is doing, that they can meaningfully participate and be aware of governmental decisions, as well as once again, coming back to that idea of building and ensuring public trust in our local uh, government institution. And so with that, we can go to the next slide. And so when we think about government ethics, uh, it's not only just the laws that we have, but it's also really solidifying that with our own personal values. So whether we're talking about being professional, uh, service oriented, uh, as you know, being organized in the work that we do, also in that spirit of collaboration, communication, uh, and just always looking forward in terms of how our actions will ultimately impact the public. And so with the Public Ethics Commission, we really have oversight over three key areas or three buckets that we call them. Uh, one dealing with campaign finance. And so uh, all of you uh, may be familiar with the Oakland Campaign Reform Act. Um, this law specifically deals with how money uh, comes in or is used in elections uh, through contributions and also being expended. On the Public Ethics Commission, we are the campaign filing officer for all of the campaign statements uh, here in the city of Oakland. Uh, we also now have the newly uh, adopted and, and, and voter approved Fair Elections Act, which is now revamped our public financing program here in the city of Oakland through the Democracy Voucher Program. And so these are areas that we have administrative control over as well as ensuring compliance with these laws. The next bucket deals with transparency. And so we oversee the city's sunshine ordinance, which is uh, works in connection with the state's Brown Act. And so this really deals with open meetings here in the city of Oakland. So in terms of uh, agenda postings, ensuring that meetings are open and accessible, that there are no barriers for public to participate in our open meeting process as well as public records. So when we're talking about public records requests and the public's access to information, so the Sunshine Ordinance regulates in terms of the time which we have to respond to public records requests, uh, the type of documents that are required to be produced uh, and those that are, are legally exempt and then also reasons to the public of why documents would be exempt. 
And so we really have shined a light on the Sunshine Ordinance and working with departments uh, throughout the city and putting out a report in terms of how we have been responding to public records requests as a city, and then also providing uh, recommendations on ways that we can improve, and then collaborating across departments uh, to ensure that the public has access to uh, documents and information that they may request from the city. Uh, the next area, uh, in transparency deals with the Lobbyist Registration Act. Uh, and we really get a lot of engagement, especially in our supervisory academy around this specific law, uh, because this really speaks to the heart of wanting to limit improper influence. And so we know that there's a lot of, uh, whether that is contracts, grant funding, permitting processes, a lot of things and governmental decisions that are within the purview of the city uh, that individuals and organizations would like to influence. And so the Lobbyist Registration Act requires individuals uh, that are lobbying or looking to influence any governmental or administrative uh, decision before the city to uh, file a disclosure and registration uh, report with the city of Oakland through the Public Ethics Commission. And so through that registration and those disclosures, it provides information about who those registered lobbyists are having meetings with, uh, the governmental decision that they're seeking to influence, uh, also talking about the monetary um, compensation that they receive for those activities. And so once again, it's just another lens of transparency and opening up the doors of the city and those that may be looking to influence decisions of the city uh, that the public may be aware. And then also for us as public servants and as well as decision makers to know individuals that are trying to influence certain outcomes that may be before us, whether legislatively or administratively. Um, then the last bucket, uh, deals with government ethics. And so primarily that deals with the Government Ethics Act, uh, in which it really lays out the framework uh, for ethics rules here in the city of Oakland. It codifies the state's uh, political reform act here at the city level. And so uh, when you think of the Government Ethics Act, uh, it deals with things such as Form 700 filing, uh, as well as conflicts of interest, uh, dealing with the misuse of city resources, and so when we deal with uh, city resources, it's not only uh, city time, but we can talk about city buildings uh, as well as other resources and anything that could potentially be a loss to the city or a gain to the person that is using that resource. And so once again, uh, when we talk about the Government Ethics Act, uh, we do have specific trainings uh, for Form 700 filers uh, that are identified in the city's conflict of interest code. And just to share a little bit about the conflict of interest code in this context, uh, biannually uh, through the city clerk's office, uh, we have to update the city's conflict of interest code, which identifies all of the positions within the city that are required to file a form 700. And so in that conflict of interest code, it's an exhaustive list of all of those positions as well as the disclosure category, which identifies what specific financial interest they must disclose on their Form 700. And so I won't go into detail about the conflict of interest code or Form 700. I know the city clerk's office will be sharing uh, about Form 700 in the next portion of this presentation. And so our office works in collaboration with the city clerk's office, uh, as well as the Department of Human Resources and Management um, to make sure that all of the employees, public servants here in the city of Oakland have an understanding of the Government Ethics Act, as well as those that are identified as Form 700 filers to make sure they understand their filing requirements, as well as the rules that are pertinent to them under the Government Ethics Act. And so these three key areas uh, are really where our oversight lies as the Public Ethics Commission. Um, and so as Suzanne has already shared with you all, we really lead with education. We really lead with collaboration and wanting to make sure that everybody is aware of the rules uh, that we have jurisdiction over. Uh, but we also do have an enforcement division to ensure compliance with these specific laws that are within our jurisdiction. And so with that, uh, in terms of complaints, uh, we do have a complaint process with our department 
uh, in which members of the public can file a formal complaint by filling out our formal complaint form and filling out all the information that is pertinent to the allegations that may be made as far as a potential violation. Uh, we also do take informal complaints. So if a member of the public just wants to give us a phone call or send us an email or provide a tip about something they may think may be wrongdoing with one of the laws we have jurisdiction over. And then lastly, the commission can uh, open proactive uh, investigations when it comes to these priority areas as well. And so once again, um, in our check-ins that we will do with each one of your offices, uh, we can dive deeper into any of these specific laws if there's an interest or if you have specific questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer those. And then as well, share a little bit more about the work that we do to ensure compliance uh, as well as awareness about these laws and those that must abide uh, by these specific provisions. So with that, we can go to the next slide. So one of the areas that we wanted to highlight uh, is a recent change. Uh, the council recently adopted uh, the new ticket distribution policy in 2022. And so under the ticket distribution policy, this really feeds into uh, two key areas. Uh, one deals with the gift rules that we have here in the city of Oakland under the Government Ethics Act. And so under uh, GIA or the Government Ethics Act, uh, there's a specific threshold or limit on the dollar amount of gifts that public servants can receive in a, in a calendar year. Um, and so we want to make sure that in this ticket distribution policy that we address not only the gift proponent, but also the use of city resources. And so under state law, uh, when it comes to the distribution of tickets to events that may be received by an entity, in this case being the city of Oakland, uh, it requires a jurisdiction to uh, adopt a ticket distribution policy uh, that lays out how those tickets will be distributed and for what public purpose those tickets will be distributed. And so in our newly adopted ticket distribution policy, it really governs the distribution of tickets by all departments and offices and elected officials here in the city, while also ensuring that tickets, uh, which are city resources, are appropriately distributed to public servants or non-city individuals for city purposes. And so back in 2017, uh, many may be familiar that there was a lot of uh, public scrutiny, uh, may not be the right word, but there was a lot of eyes on how tickets were being distributed here in the city of Oakland as it pertained to tickets to the Warriors, tickets to the Raiders, uh, as well as other uh, city events. And so with that, the city of Oakland's Public Ethics Commission, we did uh, issue a report on ensuring ethical and tr transparent distribution of city tickets, which ultimately led to the new policy that was adopted last year. And so with that, uh, we do have a new training that is available for all council members that were working in tandem with the council president's office, as well as the council uh, ass executive assistant to ensure that you're all aware of the use of uh, city tickets and how they're to be distributed here in the city of Oakland. And so under those rules, there are limits on the number of tickets that can be used, uh, also outlining the specific public purposes in which a ticket can be distributed. Uh, so we really wanna make sure that if you have any questions about that process, that you can reach out to our office, as well as ensuring that you have that training um, so that we can support you uh, as well as compliance with the ticket distribution policy. Next slide. So talking a little bit about campaign activity by office holders. And so under the city of Oakland's Government Ethics Act, uh, it lays out that city resources can't be used for any campaign related activities, uh, really highlighting that any organizing, coordinating, planning, uh, or setting up of campaign meetings or events using city property, uh, such as city telephones or city offices, that it is prohibited. Uh, but even more so when you think about potential ballot measures uh, that there may be an interest to see come in future elections, uh, there are specific rules about the activities uh, around public servants engaging uh, when it comes to ballot measure activities. And so what I'll just highlight briefly in this is that the general rule is that when it comes to doing the research or doing all of the legwork when it comes to potentially putting a ballot measure 
in the city uh, before the residents or before the voters, that city staff time and resources can be used when it comes to the research or the development of a ballot measure. Uh, but once the council adopts or votes to put the measure on the ballot, at that point, city resources can no longer be used for ballot measure activities. Uh, so essentially what it is laying out is that once it is on the ballot, uh, it essentially becomes campaign activity. Uh, and we can't use city resources to persuade people to vote yes or no uh, towards a ballot measure only to provide factual information or to provide information about how that measure may impact the city uh, and its operations. And so we provide additional resources uh, as it relates to campaign activity by office holders, uh, as well as sharing with you information. Uh, if you have an office holder committee for office holder expenses that you may have for while you're in office, there are specific rules uh, around that as far as what those funds can be used for and what they would not be allowed to be used for. And so once again, uh, at a high level, we just wanna make sure that you're aware of some of these rules. Uh, but when we have our ethics check in, we can take a deeper dive if there's anything specifically that interests you or to talk through some of these matters in a little bit more depth. Next slide. So we really uh, lead with sharing that the law is the floor and that it's not the ideal. Um, and so essentially just because something may be legal, it may not necessarily be the right thing to do or the right action to take. And so when we think about this, we really want to lead, especially when we give uh, a lot of our advice, uh, we really uh, encourage people to understand that public perception matters. And so even though something may not necessarily be as black and white or there may be a gray area, uh, we lead on the side of caution in terms of if that was uh, put in the newspaper or if that decision or action was made public, uh, how would you think that the public would react? Um, and so this is something that we're always mindful of, once again, going back to that notion of building and maintaining public trust. And so if you ever are in a position where you're not sure if something uh, it would be in violation of one of our ethics or transparency laws, uh, we really encourage you to reach out to our office. We do have an advice and assistance line, so whether that's via phone or by email. Um, you can also reach out to the city attorney's office. And if it's something that's within state rules, the FPPC is also a great resource. They also have an advice and assistance line. Um, we always ask ourselves, how will our decision making impact public trust? Uh, you know, what individuals or groups have an important stake in this outcome? Are there any concerns that are important that I should be thinking through? And then also looking at the different options that we have before us in our decision making capacity, having all of the relevant persons or groups, making sure that they're consulted and identifying any creative solutions uh, before taking any action. And so this really deals with when we're talking about specific rules around conflicts of interest or even around misuse of city resources. Uh, it's important just to think through some of these things, what we share with a lot of the employees as well, is that it's important that we think about, you know, some of these ethical situations uh, before they happen, because it gets a lot harder to be more logical in the moment when it happens. Uh, but when you're thinking about it ahead of time and thinking about what would I do if I was in a situation where I had a conflict or if I was faced with a potential misuse of city resources, how would I act? What steps would I take? Um, and so we encourage all city officials, employees uh, to really think through some of these ethical scenarios. And to that purpose is why in our Government Ethics Act training that we really provide a lot of these hypothetical scenarios so that uh, employees and officials can start thinking through some of these uh, potential interactions in their work with the city. Next slide. So as we're getting ready to, to close our portion of the presentation, uh, we do provide this 30 day checklist. And so essentially what this checklist looks at is really 30 uh, uh, things that should be done uh, by officials within their 30 days of assuming office here in the city. So we do have an introductory uh, Government Ethics Act video. It's about 10 minutes, uh, goes over a general overview of all the provisions in the Government Ethics Act. Uh, you're required to file your Form 700 uh, within 30 days. Also, uh, as elected officials, you're required to take really two ethics trainings every two years. 
And so we really want to highlight this. So one is there's a state ethics training under AB 1234 uh, that you're required to take every two years. And then also locally, we have our Government Ethics Act training, uh, which goes over the specific rules that are here in the city of Oakland. And so uh, the Government Ethics Act training is available on the city's NeoGov Learn platform, which is required every two years. And then you can go through the FPPC's website as far as completion of the AB 1234 state ethics training requirement. Uh, we also have an ethics resource binder that is available on our website. We've also linked it in this training and can follow up with you all in the email with that specific link. And so we'll provide that. And in that ethics resource binder, it provides a guide to the Government Ethics Act. We also provide the FPPC's Conflict of Interest Guide, which really takes a deep dive into the five key areas of financial interest and what, you know, what material standards have to be met uh, when you're thinking about conflicts of interest. Also providing our ticket distribution policy and report, as well as our office holder committee fact sheet and a number of other FAQs when it comes to campaign related activity by elected officials and city employees. And so I know there's a lot of information that you all have already received throughout this uh, presentation here today in this orientation. There's a lot more that we could talk about in terms of the work within our office as far as the data, the technology, the compliance, the education. Uh, but once again, we will follow up uh, with all of your offices individually uh, in hopes that we can meet with both you and your staff uh, to be able to talk through uh, a lot of this content as it relates to ethics and compliance. Uh, and then once again, to be a partner and collaboration because we want to build public trust together. And so anything that we can do to help in doing that, we make ourselves available. Uh, our commissioners were really excited last year to reinvigorate what we call our roadshow. Uh, we love to get out in the community to share about the work that we're doing here in the city of Oakland, the value that's being provided in terms of transparency and government ethics. And we love to work with all of your individual council offices to go out to your districts uh, and to share about the good work that's being done here in the city of Oakland. Uh, so with that, uh, we can go to the next slide, which I think just highlights uh, the link to the resources that I just shared about. Uh, but with that, we just want to say thank you for the time, for inviting us to be a part of this orientation. Uh, look forward to working with you all, and we're open to any questions that you may have.